Hey, hey, it's your favorite. It's your favorite. It's your favorite. Your favorite. It's your favorite podcast, man. It's always a negative, like, bug <laughs> in the room. Like, for we real, man. AirPods, and they just don't know how to act, man. It's Nobody, I, don't know. Who, I wonder who got new AirPods. You got new AirPods. So I'll be happy. You always, you always telling the world my business, bro. <laughs> What's Drinking out of my coldest water bottle. <laughs> That's how you got the new AirPods. Them sponsors right. up. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Only nobody, nah, nobody comes in. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> oh, you broke. All right. All right. That plaque uh, say, say the same thing behind you. That plaque right there don't say you broke. Yeah, all right. Right. Anywho, right. Anywho, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Your boy Dub and Ross in this thing with the ITT, ITC podcast. Uh, we have so lovely... China Marie in here, you feel me? What's good? What's good? Gracing us with her presence today. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. China does a little bit of everything, but I'm going to let her introduce herself to mm-hmm. you guys. You feel me? Go ahead, let them know who you are. What's up, everybody? This is China Maria. I'm a Houston, Texas model, artist, and a dope ass teacher. Ooh, hey. can we put here? Okay. Yeah, you can go crazy. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go crazy. Yeah. But now, um, don't teach. I mean, that's a little bit of everything. Right. Kind of, a little talent in every little corner there. So um, definitely dope. Uh, one thing we definitely want to touch on, uh, because China is here, is something dope that we're going to just throw in there in the midst. But again, we ain't going to go too heavy just yet. I told y'all, it, this might still be heavy to people, but have y'all heard about the Marcus Houston situation? With, uh, Marcus him supposed- Houston, Man, so he's supposedly uh, dating... Um, this chick who's his fiance and i think she just turned she was 19. just 18 she just turned 19 and he's mm-hmm. like 38 mm-hmm. so Did he 38 that's what it said when i looked it up marcus oh. is probably up there though he's like he's, he's a- older than us definitely yeah 38 i ain't know i thought he was like a little bit older than that to be honest <laughs> i mean she probably is who knows yeah <laughs> He's honest. engaged to an eighteen-year-old. She just well, turned she's nineteen, so she's 19. nineteen now. <laughs> Give her a year. Like, she don't look nineteen though. No fact. She looks like grown. I would have been. <clears throat> you would have I would have been. How old are you again? And then what? Then what would you have done? We're not talking <laughs> about. <laughs> that. We're just talking about how old are you again? That's all I want to know. Oh, that's cool. It wasn't. It ain't that long ago. I just want to know how old you are. That's it. What's, what's your what's your dating limit? You're single, so what's what's your dating? What's what's the lowest you'll go? You asking me or you asking Charlie? First? I'm asking you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Dang. Um, you know, you know, it's a double standard. Well, women, it don't matter. They they be like, "Ooh, that girl got her." It matters. It definitely matters. Cap, cap. <laughs> if if this was a 38 year old chick dating a 19 year old dude, you think it would have mattered? Yes. Right. Wasn't it that was. the same situation with um? What's her name? Ch- uh, Black China and the the oh yeah, Jeff, I mean, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Uh, what's that nigga name? Why uh, being um J? Almighty J. Yeah, Almighty yeah. J. Yeah. I remember yeah, he that. Like, he was like 19, 20 or something like that at the time. And they I don't remember it, but he was he was he was deep in them fake cheeks. You know what I'm saying? So not the fake cheeks. I mean, he was in that thing. So, but. <laughs> At the Soccer end of the day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. More fun than a pillow fight. Blow them up. Oh. <laughs> Shout out oh, to God. the soccer boppers, bro. But no, nah, um, at that time, he was, I mean, granted, it's, it's China, you know what I'm saying? Not you, China, but, you know, that China. Black China. But, yeah, black China. But at the same time, it's like, but he didn't really get, like, no flack because it's like, that's like a come up for like right. a young guy or a young man. It's like you talking to an older chick, you automatically got cool points. Now, the roles reverse. It's like, yo, hey, what are you doing here? Right. But I think it's because we accept the double standard. Or his iPad, <laughs> Ross iPad. What's up, connection? <laughs> 
Oh, you got that, that spring thing going on, huh? Uh, nah, nah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <you> know. <laughs> it's all right, bro. I ain't judging. I feel you, man. I understand. So you still never gave your your uh your limit though, like he really uh, did. He went uh, all the way around limit, that shit. Uh, my limit would probably have to be, I want to say, um, uh, I want to say about a good twenty five. Twenty five. That's the limit for me right not now. Bad. It's not bad. Yes, twenty five is because I'm shit. I'm about to be damn near thirty. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm almost up there. <laughs> you thirty, nigga? Not damn near. No, I'm but, not, bro. I'm right. still twenty eight. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Round it off. Um, but shut up. <laughs> but now nah, that would that would be my my age limit right there. I don't want anything under yep. five. Now nah, that's that's right. What about you, China? Okay, so I'm twenty six. My limit will be. So yeah, you got a two year span. <laughs> okay, that's good math. So everybody on that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's just to me, I just can't date nobody younger than me. I don't know. It depends. It yeah, depends. I mean. But no, it, like, if you're younger than 24, I don't um, So th- everybody agrees that this situation just seemed gross. I mean, again, we, we accept the double standard because we do understand that, um, you know, dudes doing certain things just – it just looked totally out of line versus mm-hmm. when the roles were reversed. And right. it just is what it is. I don't fight it, but this, uh, yeah. Cause I think apparently they said that, um, he may have been talking to her while she was underage. Um, oh. that's, that's, that's his fiance. 19, I would assume so. Yeah. So they had to have been like kicking it. <laughs> Maybe since she was like 15. And so oh, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's, I don't know about that. <laughs> It's, yeah. uh, it's not my cup of tea. I'll say that. It's not my cup of tea. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's pedophile. That's, that's, that's the wow. perfect. Oh. It's, it's pretty wow. pedophile. China oh. created that, not me. What? <laughs> you said it's pedophile. Uh, I just went ahead and agree with you. That, uh, that's um, some real R. Kelly-ish. Yeah, but yeah. this seemed to be... <laughs> <laughs> like, like no cap. So, um, as far as modeling, because I know you said you're a model and whatnot, so you know I kind of want to dive a little bit into your background before uh, we dig into some of the other real stuff. But um, so how do you love modeling? When did you start, and what's keeping you inspired? Um, well, to be honest, I started back in 2008 around the summertime. 2018, I mean, around the summertime. Okay. Um. I kind of just wanted to try it out, and I ended up in a fashion show, my very first fashion show, um, and I kind of blew up from there a little bit. Ever since then, I've been working my behind off, the networking, learning how to uh, put everything together that I need to have together. Um, so now I've been, it's almost coming up on two years that I've been a model, and I've done like hey. countless photo shoots, okay. maybe like over 12 runway shows. Um, cast okay. different fashion week uh, for wear models. I'm casting for fashion week. I have another casting go to tomorrow, so I love it. Ow. All right. Okay, popularity. Easy, easy. That's dope though, because um, uh, that's that's a unique crowd. I mean, because I, I got a a chance to get a my feet wet in modeling, and it's real. Like, yeah, I did watch <laughs> your lines actually. Yeah, you did. You actually did. You? Yeah, it was last year. Was it last year? Damn, it did go by that quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, and that was a dope. That was a dope um uh, show as well. So, uh, but you know, it 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 always looked easier. You know, when you just looking, but behind the scenes, it's hard. so much shit going crazy. It's, it's like so hard. well, it because see, like it's different types of modeling. Mm-hmm. So, um, with me, I'm definitely with runway print fashion. Um, of course, you have other models that do other stuff. But um, when you're dealing with runway, not only you have to learn how to walk the different runway styles, which is very hard because right. um, as a black woman, you automatically have like this sassiness to you and don't let you be big, big. I mean, you, you know, right. like... 
you moving, things you ain't supposed to be moving. So right. you have to learn how to control all of that when it comes to like different stuff because at the end of the day, 90% of these in, uh, people in the industry don't mm-hmm. want all of that sass. They just want right. to see if you're able to do a high fashion run So it's, it is kind of hard and it does kind of take work. No, nah, it does, especially. And you know what? I, I, I'm, it's real key. You got to be organized because, yeah. boy, when shit ain't organized, you got people running from left to right and butt naked trying to figure out who they supposed to be walking for. <laughs> and damn, I'm right. pissed out there already. And you trying to hurry up and throw something on? Hey, sir, can you zip me up? Like, <laughs> them, <laughs> that shit is real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It would be a single man's dream uh, to be behind the scenes in like a a situation like that, you know, so <laughs> for all the people out there that want to get into designing, you know what I'm saying, for the right reasons, yeah, yeah. go ahead and do it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, so, um, me and Ross was talking about this the other night, um, the situation that happened, uh, with the uh, Rashard Brooks, um, at the Wendy's. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> he was putting me up on game because I hadn't even seen the video of, uh, apparently he had been drinking and. Um, he had, was in the drive through line drunk and the people from the Wendy's called the police to, you know, come and see what was going on. Cause they said he was blocking up the way all the communication between him and the officers seemed peaceful and calm. The next thing you know, I'm seeing RIP. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, um, Ross was the one putting me up on game on this one. And then I kind of went in and I looked into it, but I just seen today, I think they charged, um, the cops they charged both of them. murder. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. They charged both of them. Yeah. <clears throat> they did that quicker than what they had to. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's like, I think, uh, I believe they were fired. Not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Either they were fired or they resigned. No, nah, I think they. I think they fired. The first thing I seen is that they fired them. Right, and then they. Then uh, today I'm saying they they charged. They, they was charged, and it's like, hey man, I just feel like uh, that situation obviously should have been handled way different. It didn't. I don't think right. the legal force was needed to that extent. You feel me? Like I, I think that. I think it was just unnecessary. You feel me? If you watch the video, watch the footage, I mean, it shouldn't get to that point. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, we had that little conversation with my dad uh, last week, you know, mm-hmm. just how to handle certain stuff, you know. And, of course, there's different different rules and regulations to each department. So one department may be more right. strict like my father's. They're very strict on that shit. And, and other departments, they're, they're more... They give you more uh, wiggle room, you feel me? But we just live in this time period where these phones, they don't lie. You know what I'm saying? What you see what you see on these phones, even though, you know, they got the little police cams, but they can turn those off. You feel yeah. me? They can turn those off if, if need be, you feel me? So these phones, it, it, it's, it's crazy that, you know, that's what you see pretty much on social media now is, you know, when's the next killing going to be at, right. you know what I'm saying? When's the next shooting? When's the next mm-hmm. unnecessary roughness? And without these phones, I think a lot of this stuff would go unchecked. A lot of this would go under the rug. There'd be plenty more RIP shirts. We would know about it. You know what I'm saying? So, and just, it, to piggyback, just to piggyback off of what you're saying, um, that is definitely true. Like, phones definitely don't lie. Just because if I wasn't recording and so many other people wasn't recording when um, when I protested Tuesday, um, we wouldn't actually would have known what actually happened because mm-hmm. literally I want to say 85 to 90% of them officers didn't have on body cam and some of them had them off. Like just to hear um, a few cops laughing, talking about, oh, okay, now it's time to turn it on. It's like, damn, okay, so y'all plotting to do some shit. Right, so it's right. Like, it's, it's, it's really important. I, it's, it sucks to say, but it's important to have your phone now, especially when you, you know, come across an officer nowadays, which is really uh, that's, good. True. Yeah. that's real. But, you know, and so because um, you were at the protest for the George Floyd uh, march that they had uh, in Houston. And um, so just talk about that experience. Like, what, what was it like 
being out there, what you know, what did you feel? Did you what did it have a presence with it? Um <clears throat> well it was Take your time. <laughs> I don't have to say I mean be honest, be real. It was fun. I ain't gonna lie. And the only reason why I say it was fun to me mm-hmm. at first was because it's like, dang, you know, my mom always told me to stand up for what was right. And mm-hmm. just having that feeling like, you know, I left work early to go to it. I made my signs. I had my shirt. Like, that was the fun part, you know. Right. Um, But then what I told everybody is when Trader Truth left, the media left and went somewhere for a little bit before they came back, that's when shit got real. And mm-hmm. at that point, it wasn't fun anymore, but it was more so of um, – like a like your adrenaline was rushing because you don't know what's going to happen. So before right. things started to happen around with me and my friends, I want to say not too long ago, like a teenager had got pepper sprayed for no reason. Um, people was throwing stuff at the cops. And so me and my friends were trying to stop the people from throwing stuff because it's like we're trying to keep it peaceful. Right. We're not trying to give them a reason <laughs> to do anything that we don't want them to do. And that kind of went left. So I want to say maybe around 7 o'clock, they started to surround us. Um, At that time, it was only like that little bit that was in that field. Mm -hmm. And we was actually on our way to go home. But then I guess some people still was trying to protest. And George Floyd, one of his real sisters was out there with us, Mm -hmm. walking with us. And they was following us the whole entire time. So... I later found out that when we was at uh, the George R. Brown, they had, at first I thought they surrounded us at the field, but they had literally surrounded us all the way. Like, it was kind of like miles on end where they had surrounded us. Like, even if we tried to leave, it was at that point, it was a no-go. And then someone said that we was on a curfew. We didn't hear anything about a curfew. They were just making up a lot of ideas. So then when we got to that field, I mean... I want to say with me and my friend Jess and everybody, we in front of them. And the guy, one of the officers was like, oh, watch out for a rock. So we turned. And when we turned back, they just started bomb rushing us, pepper spraying us. We fell on top of this fence into like this construction site. Damn. It was real bad. Like the shirt, I had to get my friend the shirts off my back for mm-hmm. shoes. They took her shoes by trying to drag her. She got hit in the stomach. Wow. One girl got trampled, and it was by people and the police. Like, I literally went back to pull her out. And I think that's why I ended up getting hurt, because I was just in the midst of all of that. Mm-hmm. But, um, like, she had to be rushed to the hospital. It, it was real bad. But I don't regret nothing, and I'll do it again, to be honest. And I and I still stand for everything that's that I did. But when we went to jail, it was... It was horrible because inside of that system is like the black people treated us worse than any other race inside. Mm. And that was the fucked up part because it's like, dang, you guys are really not trying to, because I sat here and was like, okay, it starts from the inside and only takes one person. But little did I know when I actually got in there, y'all didn't give a fuck and y'all don't care. Right. And it's sad to say because we're the same color. So... I don't know if it's because y'all trying to please them or if y'all feel like this is all BS, but it was, it was like a powerful thing. So I end up, I don't know if y'all saw that news interview that I did with that guy from San Antonio. I, I didn't. I need to check that out. Yes. It's on my Instagram. Um, he drove all the way from San Antonio to interview me about it. We went back to the scene. Like you can see the fit oh, knocked over everything. So that's crazy. And again, like you were saying, like that that's that's prime example. Like when Trey left when the the, the, the cameras was off and stuff like that, that's when they really kind of tried to, you know, get that's when the real came up. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's and, when the real protest happened. Yeah. All that peace stuff, there's never ever had never have been, never will be, never ever going to be a peaceful <clears throat> protest. There's no such thing. And that's what people don't realize. Like, you might want it to be peaceful. And it's not even us who don't want it to be peaceful. It's who who ended off 
being in a riot. It literally right. be law enforcement. So yeah. to them, it's like, oh, okay, now we got time. Like it's to them, it's a game. They having fun. Yeah, they probably like, man, we ready to go home, man. These people ain't trying to leave. Like, let's mm-hmm. do some shit. And that's crazy. That we was on our way to the house. We was re- literally on our way to go home. We was going to our cars. And people, like, everybody who did jump over the fence, who didn't get pushed in, I found out, like, the officers was closing in. Like, we was mice and they was cat. Literally, like, they was closing in. And so it didn't even matter if you was trying to say, hey, I'm trying to go home. I'm trying to go to right. the car. They would hit your ass and take you away anyway. So yeah. I had bruises from zip ties. It, it was real bad. It was real bad. From and that's that shit. Thursday, we was in jail. Damn. Tuesday to we Thursday. Twice. We barely slept. I had like bags under my eyes like bad. Like really, really bad. Damn, I ain't know you was in there that long. Right. And I know it, that must have felt like it, forever. It did feel like forever because every room we went into didn't have a clock. So when we was with mm. HPD, they put us in this gym and they separated us with cages. So girls were sitting down on the floor in the cages and then guys had a cage that they were sitting down. With. And then we got transferred from them to Harris County. Damn. Like, they, they wasn't even just trying to hold y'all overnight. Like, man, let me just... They was doing that shit on purpose. So we stayed in the booking area till you basically got released. Like, some of my friends, I found out some of my friends who I didn't even know was protesting was in there. Some people had got arrested days Damn. before us, hours before us, earlier that day, and they were still sitting in there. Now, they got released before we did, but mm. it was still... I mean, like, they. I think they probably had it worse than us because they were sitting there all that time. Right. So, what did y'all do? Y'all just sitting there talking the whole time in there or just... Shoot. I mean, if we wasn't talking, we was just, like, trying to get through it. Like, we was trying to make the best of it. I mean, I tried to go to sleep, but I couldn't because they would sit here right. and say, oh, we're going to call your name so many times. And it's over a hundred and something of us that they arrested that night. And I didn't right. talk. So it's yeah. like, you don't want to go to sleep and get your name is, you know, called and you missed on it because now you got to sit there like this one girl she was actually about to get processed out but they said her name so low or she couldn't hear it and she had to wait another two or three hours before her name got called again that's childish <laughs> that's fucked up right that's, that's and then ridiculous. they mixed us in with other criminals so it was just it was just like fucked up because we seen other people getting processed and booting and we were like okay what's taking y'all so long it right. took like 14 hours before we had got our first phone call so we was writing numbers on our arms and shit so we can like numbers that we would think we might need. Right. It was it was, it was like fucked up. Like really fucked up. Kind of like a, a taste of what was going on back in the day. You know what I'm right. saying? Like and I kept saying that too. And I kept like in my life, even on the news, like I just kept saying it feels like the nineteen sixties all over again because except for the dogs and the water hose, I said because you Gosh. know we're both fighting for the same thing then and now. We both getting our ass beat then and now. I mean, they're, you know, they got their ass beat a little worse than us, but you know, it's just... Same it's, way, just, diff- just, uh, just different tactics. Right. Mm-hmm. You right. Know, and no. I mean, it was really crazy. Because they threw, they threw, uh, I thought it was going to be tear gas, but they threw, I forgot the name of it. It makes this like super loud noise, like tear gas, and they started smoking. So I was just like, oh, shit. And so you can see the snipers that was on top of George R. Brown. Damn, I mean, bro. it was like, damn. You don't know if they have rubber bullets, real bullets. You don't know. Right. But I went to the protest with all of that in mind. Everything that w- could have went wrong, I was like, it's going to happen to me. Because when you protest, I mean, you have to realize there's not going to be a peaceful protest. Mm-hmm. And so you have to think that. Come ready for war. Right, you literally have to prepare yourself for war. No, nah, that's facts, and I and I like that. Like if you, re- and that's why I'm like, don't get me wrong, I love Houston, I love Trey or whatever, but when some shit popped out, that nigga ran. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to hear nothing about him doing anything dealing with peace, because as soon as shit started to pop off, him and everybody else that was so called that was there for the cause ran, and that's not what a real protest is supposed to be about. You're supposed to stay on your ground. And for Stanford was right. 
if you right. know you're not doing nothing wrong, there's no reason that anybody should touch you, should do anything in the violation of your right. Right. But because it's a protest and because you're black and because they it's their game to them, you're gonna get hurt. So, yeah, because you said uh, his sister, uh, George Floyd's sister, um, was there with y'all. She was there, but I think it was a car that was blocking all the other cars that was trying to uh, move past us. Mm-hmm. And so this car was literally stopping in front of other cars when we were walking on the street. And this is before they told us to move to the sidewalk so we didn't get arrested. Mm-hmm. So when we moved to the sidewalk, I think way before that stuff happened, she had left in that car, which I'm glad she did because like, shit really got real. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. then that would have been worse for her to be not only right. protesting for she her brother. Yeah, man. That, but now, nah, you know, that's real. And you know what? It, it always brings to mind when uh people bring up from seeing like videos from back in this uh, day from people getting water hosed and beat and stuff like that in crowds. How people was like, oh, man, that wouldn't have been me or I couldn't have been no slave. And da, 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 da. I would have did this, this, and this. And it's just like, well, you kind of got to a taste of that right now like because i mean even now with all the different hangings going on mm-hmm. all of a sudden yeah. all of the all of the suicidal hangings uh going on it's just like man we literally are at war and people just gotta i think for us that i'm seeing with the black community is that we need to just like let that let shit go uh, amongst each other because mm-hmm. just between the, the past few days i've been seeing so many different like black against black like right. disagreements and i'm just like bro regardless of what it is <laughs> we are all important you know what i'm saying right. like this this is really they don't want us to come together you know what i'm saying like they they hate and even now like you you did you see how just a piece like the whole world was protesting going mm-hmm. out doing stuff just because of what we stood up for after seeing what happened to George Floyd, after seeing what happened to Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, who we still trying to get justice for. So, mm-hmm. like, we we got a millisecond of coming together, and you've seen people in London, like, you've seen people, like, all overseas and stuff like that um, protesting. I mean, I, I think it was Ross was like, even the Amish people <laughs> was coming Oh, out. yeah. <laughs> we was like, man, the Amish people. The what? Amish, the witches. Yeah, bro. Yeah, the witches. I saw a meme. I saw a meme that was like, "It has to be a problem if the Amish and the witches got together." (laughs) Facts. Yes, but that's crazy. Like, just, just, but that's just a glimpse of us coming together, and they know once if black people just say, "You know what? Let's let's just figure this shit out and come together." That's raps. That's it. We we take money out of everything. We make everything popular. Mm -hmm. We're, We're we're the most like talented. You know, just it's just being black is just a, a thing. Like it's godly. You know what I'm saying? Not trying to over, you know, put us on a, a pedestal, but I mean, it is what it is. And right. the fact that we they know that, that yeah, we do. But the fact that they know when you keep people in shambles and you keep drama going on, it's gonna keep us all over the place. Cause this person don't like this, or she don't like that. They don't like this, and it's just like that's that keeps us powerless because of that mm-hmm. simple, just that simple thing. You know, so um, I do appreciate what I did see when, you know, everybody did start coming together. I mean, people like when they did the thing on like with companies, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, you know, I still have my way about companies doing things. But the fact that everywhere you go, everything you click on, Black Lives Matter. Right. Right. So it's it's like I, I have to respect it, you know. Yeah. In, in some manner because I know companies do their thing too but the fact that they putting it in your face every time you click or do something that's showing how powerful and like that's that's mm-hmm. power yep Nike uh just uh they decided to uh allow their employees employees to be off because they're gonna recognize Juneteenth True. as a holiday which it should and I'm having a party lit right. yeah I gotta send y'all the invite Juneteenth oh. is, is the shit. Friday. Right. Oh, okay. All right. We can, We're getting we can chicken and push. mac and cheese catered. Ooh, oh, yeah. you, you talking too much now. Don't, 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 don't say chick, chicken. <laughs> is fried chicken? Fried chicken. Yeah. Oh. Uh, ooh. We're talking about, <laughs> like, talking about the, the shell mac and cheese or the regular mac and cheese? Which mac and cheese? 
Her mac and cheese. You, is you can do both with either one though. Her mac and cheese is good. Hey. So that's all I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. I'm 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 there. But nah. Uh I believe Target just announced as well that they uh they're gonna allow their employees to be off. They're gonna recognize that as a national holiday. I think more companies should start doing that because I mean for us, it's our independence day. For black people, it's our independence day and it, it should be recognized as a national holiday. You feel me? X. I mean that's what I mean. Because as a kid, I don't re- really remember being, like, remember school was just talking about Juneteenth like that. I'm just keeping it a buck. It was always 4th of July. You know, right. like, of course, we already out of school and stuff, but mm-hmm. it wasn't even mentioned. You know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe one time during Black History Month, maybe one right. time. But other than that, it was always about 4th of July, Independence, 4th of July. America, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah. it's like, yo, that's that's great and all, but nigga, we was we, we was slaves. What you mean? Like, right. Y'all, right. y'all was free from from the the homeland, nigga. We weren't free at all. It didn't even matter. It didn't matter who won or lost, nigga. We were still gonna take the L on that. So, hey, nigga, we right. y'all declared y'all independence in seventeen seventy six. What you talking about, man? We didn't See, get abolished till 1865. Like, look, right. look the at the separation. About my dad, um, he used to take me to Juneteenth events in Houston. That's lit. Every year when I was a little girl. So I kind of, that that's the only reason why I knew about Juneteenth. I remember that too. definitely didn't tell me. My family actually celebrated it. So I actually, and I think they still, I think they still do different events throughout uh, different parts of Houston. For Juneteenth, uh-huh. but that's the crazy thing, they don't yeah. broadcast that either. Yeah, so if you didn't know about it, you just didn't know about it. Facts, no, nah, that's super facts. I mean, because that's how I found out through my parents, and um, it was an event going on that they had one time, and uh, yeah, like, but yeah, I didn't even know what it was before that. It was just mm-hmm. like Juneteenth, okay, that's yeah, what cool. is that, but uh, yeah. 4th of July coming up, you know what I'm saying, but it's like. <sighs> When when you think about like what you learn through school, it's like damn, I gotta unlearn a lot of shit. Like or learn really, something. <laughs> yeah, like but you know what I'm saying, like just to really reset your up. mindset because you know you thinking Christopher Columbus that nigga. <laughs> you know That's what I'm saying? What they said. They, they had said us he thinking was he was that nigga, bro. And then you find out he he was an asshole. Right. <laughs> he, was, he was a piece of shit. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, like you find out the truth. It's like, wait, that's no. the same guy. Really? He was out here plagiarizing before it was cool. <laughs> he was plagiarizing for real. Oh no, nah, man! You know, <laughs> I found this country. I don't know what y'all talking about. Oh, and yeah. like, this is mine. Mean, right? What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? We've already <laughs> made apps. I seen. I seen a meme where somebody was like. uh they was like, I know Christopher Columbus right now, uh, rolling in his grave. And somebody commented and said, Nah, that nigga probably rolled in somebody else's grave, talking about he discovered it first. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. come on, bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's <laughs> facts. Not, not the grave talk, bro. Nah, that's, that's funny. That's see what I did there. You know what I'm I did see what you, I see what you did you there. Plagiarism. You know what I, I mean, so, you know, since, since we on that, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Go ahead, bring it up. Plagiarizing. Go ahead, bring it up, bro. Just, Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know if y'all know or familiar, all the people out there, but uh, B. Simone has been in uh, ah. a couple, couple of controversial things. So I know last mm-hmm. week, uh, or was it a week before last? It was uh-oh, one of those weeks. Sprint. Oh, China, she's not here no more. Oh, but nah, it was like, T-Mobile. I want to say, Last week, or uh, week before last, or whatnot, basically she was. Uh, I just had to turn my mind. Uh, she was basically uh, talking about, you know, her preference on not dating a dude with a nine to five. They got to be an entrepreneur, yada yada yada. Of course, people, you know, was coming at it. You feel me? And then it comes to find out because Twitter knows all. <laughs> Somehow, some way, if you say something that triggers people. And they we don't like find it. You. We gonna find they you. gonna find something that you don't want. And before this, no one was talking about plagiar- plagiarism. Somebody came out basically saying, "Yo, 
that stuff in her book, I wrote that. That's my <laughs> shit. And they posted everything. Everything, bro. I'm like, wow. And, it, and then it, she it, didn't it, even try to switch up the order. No, she didn't. It was literally copy, paste, send, money, please. You feel me? That's, that's literally what but it was. Wait, I think what made it worse was when we found out she didn't even read the book before she put it yeah. out. <laughs> I, I think that that caught me more than anything. I'm like, fam, first of all, we know how some people write books. She they got a team. Columbus, bro. Yeah, nah, That's yeah, great. of course. You got a team of people and you putting your, you know, your ideas and thoughts out there and they gather these ideas and thoughts and they create the structure of a book. Create. But, buddy, you... But the type of book she was writing, I think, mm-hmm. differs. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it was like one of them tips to how I became successful or something like that. Yeah, it was. It was a, you know, like a, like one of those inspirational entrepreneurial type books. So it almost that. makes you feel like I have to. That has to be something that comes from you. Like if yeah. I'm telling you my steps to how I got to where I am in life, right. like I'm a millionaire, and I'm like, yeah, let me write this book to mm-hmm. how I made it to, and you find out I didn't write it, it's like, man, this wasn't even you, like. It wasn't, it was the team, and the team got it from other people's, <laughs> other people. <laughs> other people Google some shit. Yeah, bro, so, you know, of course, she no. hit the apology, you know what I'm saying, she addressed the situation. Wait, wait, but, before we go to that part, though, China, how do you feel about the nine to five part, though? Oh, first of all, oh, take your time. Oh, I know you eating. Take your time. Oh, how you feel about the nine five? See, you cannot judge somebody just because they want to do a nine to five or look at them in any kind of way just because they want to do a nine to five. But one that might be their choice. Like me, I had so That's- many people. Tell me, oh, I can do forex, and I can do this, and I can do that, and you shouldn't have to work for nobody. I don't want to do none of that shit. <laughs> I, I do not want to have to look at my phone. I don't want to add no numbers up. I don't want to do none of that shit. I have right. no problem with clocking in to go teach my students. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? Just because that's your mindset doesn't mean you have to force it on somebody else. Hey. This is a, me a stop it. Just stop it. No, nah, that's facts. And and then it, I think my only error, like the error is how she said it. Like you can have your preference, but you can't mm-hmm. act like having a nine to five it's a just bad, automatically takes you bad. out of a, I don't understand a person that's trying to be an ent- entrepreneur's mindset. Like, like That's I, crazy, bro. I, she took date. a nine to five's uh, <laughs> information and put it in her book. <laughs> <laughs> Them nine to five niggas found that shit out on Twitter real quick. Oh, you, oh, that's how you feel? Oh, I got you. Get, get the googling. Wait a minute. I mean, bro, because you can have your like. I'm all. I'm all for your preference, cause yeah, like, yeah. like what you eat don't make me shit. So it don't even bother me, yeah. like how you want to move in life. But it's just you can't say shit like, <laughs> oh, I need somebody that's gonna understand because you know some people. If you're an entrepreneur, that means you want to leave something behind. That means you want to have something for your children. Can and I'm just like, right. mm, I think every person i don't know a person that that has children or wants that just don't want to leave a legacy you know what I'm right. saying? everybody i've come in contact with or i'm cool with they want to have something for themselves that carries on to the next generations to come so you can't yeah. really just make that an entrepreneur only type of thing you know i have an entrepreneur mindset but i ain't out here like man my wife better have been an entrepreneur type of female or you know what i'm saying like it's because mm-hmm. sometimes you can be honestly when you're an entrepreneur, you work way more than you do when you work a nine to five. Like real facts, yeah. because mm-hmm. you gotta do a lot more creating and critiquing yourself and your content because that nine to five is actually security. Like you ain't gotta worry about a lot of shit when you're going to work, but your job. But when you got an a business, oh, you gotta worry about this, that, taxes. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about that. Right. <laughs> We've been in that ball. Yep. You feel me? So it's it's you know that's you can have your preference, but There's at no the same time, that. don't shit on the next. Don't talk, yeah, don't shame other people. Cause then Twitter will find you, and this is what happens. 
But the now fact that she didn't even read the book, though, I think that that took me out. And that then she tried to, she tried <laughs> to say, you know what I'm saying, basically tried to put the fall on the team, but then tried to say, well, you know what I'm saying, even though the team messed up, I'm going to take full responsibility. That's cold. I, I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. You're not tricking me. You basically <laughs> throw it on the team, but I'm going to be the bigger woman. I mean, your name is on the book. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't even read it. You didn't read it. You just said, okay. Her whole up. career just got canceled. In that 2.5 seconds, she was <laughs> Didn't she? She had did something else before this, too. Like, they was talking Nothing. about her. It was, no, like, something like people was, like, canceling her for something else. And then this. Like, Maybe because of that 9 to 5 thing. Cancel culture is just, anyway. But it's like, yeah. Um. These people are really kind of putting themselves. You, you learn a lot about people during this pandemic. Like you, you getting to know about a lot of people. It does some shit. A lot of people yeah. are showing them true colors. You feel me? So, yeah. um, damn, that's crazy. I'm hungry. She over here making me hungry. That's yeah. <laughs> I decided to wait to eat and try to oh, be yeah, uh, waiting, but I was like, I'm too hungry. <laughs> I had some raisin canes too, just waiting on me. You feel me? I'm just like, damn. Don't let it get cold, bro. Don't let it get cold, bro. That sauce ain't gonna hit the same. Oh, it's gonna hit the same. When you hungry, it don't even matter though. The cold, <laughs> that shit don't even matter. I'm not. I'm not one of them. You hungry? People. You gonna eat? You gonna eat that shit regardless. Regardless. Facts, 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 facts. But um, <laughs> she didn't read it, bro. Like um, uh. So hey, so what's been going on with J Cole, man? Like we supposed to be reacting to this this video. That he mm-hmm. called uh, snow, on the, snow on the Bluff. He just dropped a a track, actually, not a. I yep. think it's a music video. I so, think I heard of it, but I haven't seen the video. Bro, the black. <laughs> what is it? Go ahead, Ross. This this Ross topic. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Go crazy, you brother. About? Don't get scared now. What are you talking about? Don't get scared <laughs> now, man. I ain't getting scared. I'm just saying, bro. I love my black queens. I just want to start that. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I love my black queens. queens. You know when the nigga about what to say. What you gotta say, Ross? See, <laughs> she didn't stop eating. Nah, Ross was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Ross called me hot earlier. Oh no, bro! I was getting. What bad. you gotta say? Was, I'm sick of these bad. good deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The hell so, with them. <laughs> I did not say that. That's super cow. So basically, from what I've been getting, like the gist of, because we once again we're gonna react to it probably this weekend. So we try our best. I can't wait to you know like avoid it. But basically, apparently, in this track, J Cole was addressing uh, uh, a woman about a, a particular topic. I don't know the logistics of it. I just know that's the track he was addressing. No name. And, and, yeah, no name. And basically, it was coming off as, I guess you can say, people were at, women were having the issue with uh, why when a black woman says something, there has to be a challenge towards it. Why can't it be a understanding instead of it being a challenge? Why do black men feel you have to, you know what I'm saying, switch up the tone? Because basically, J. Cole's mindset, he, he stands by what he said in the track, which is fine, what else? And he was basically saying, you know, well, you know, I feel like there's a way to pronounce things and explain things, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we can we can definitely, you know, come together, bridge that gap so it doesn't come off as aggressive. That's pretty much the gist of what I was getting. And then, you know, there were some people that I know that was like, well, why does she have to switch up the tone? Why, you know what I'm saying? And she got... She has a book club where she explains stuff. Why, why, why motherfuckers can't get, just go and read it? You know what I'm saying? Why black men? And once, once I heard why black men. Oh, you know that's right. I checked out. I checked out. And, it, and and here's the thing about that. I get it. Black women do have it hard. Let's if we're gonna call it a spade, we're gonna call it a spade. Black women have it hard. It's it's their culture gets taken. Their style. Their fashion. It gets taken. It gets appropriated into something else and mm-hmm. they don't get the they don't get the credit they get the 
there'll, there'll be other races that will take it and make it clean, you know, claim it as beauty. But when they see it on someone else, they see it on a, a black woman, it's not categorized as beauty. You feel me? We, I see that. I get that. You feel me? I come from a black mother. You feel me? I understand that, but I, I don't like when even not even if you just take this track out of you know this, the conversation. I've seen it where it'll it'll the the quote will always start with black men blank 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 blank. blank. You know what I'm saying? And right. I, the issue I have is just the generalization. There's nothing wrong with having a conversation. I don't. I think is. I want to word this correctly. I think is. <laughs> Don't be scared. Yeah, I got to word this correctly. Don't I, be scared. No, it's not that I'm scared. I want to, you know, come say what I want to say in an effective way. And not come articulate off, yourself correctly. You know, I don't want to come off as toxic, but I think there's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting a woman to be able to, I guess, express things in a, a lighter tone. There's nothing wrong with that. I get some women are aggressive, and I'm not saying, oh, this is what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? As a black woman, this is what it got to be. No, I'm not saying that at all. But I, I do feel like tone is everything. You feel me? Approach is everything. No matter who, what the race is, approach is everything. So you can have a valid pen. You can have a valid mindset. But if your approach comes off as aggressive and, you know, not inviting, is anybody really going to listen to what you have to say? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not generalizing this because I want, I want the black community men and women to get out of putting everybody in this box of oh women that black women ain't shit black men ain't shit i hate that let's get out of that let's let's switch up that stigma because at the end of the day we know there's some ancient individuals on both sides of the spectrum oh, yeah. but we don't it's not gonna solve nothing if you sit up there and say well you know what i'm saying why does a black man have to blah 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 blah, blah. it's like bro like that's not solving anything that's just creating that divide but there is nothing wrong with addressing the situation too i do feel like you know what i'm saying sometimes as black men we do sweep stuff under the rug and there's nothing wrong with that being addressed i just want the conversation to be had to the point where it doesn't become this black men don't give a damn about black women shit and there's some mm -hmm. that do but i don't i don't like that narrative because that narrative all it does is just perpetuate the fucking circle of fuckery as i call it Cause it's just this hurt people saying hurt shit to other hurt people. That's mm. all it is, and I don't like that shit. So, you know, nigga been practicing. You, but you know, so it's I crazy that what you're saying is facts. But I didn't even know it was a, a diss. Cause I mean, not not that I knew. I didn't hear it yet. So yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even count. But just from reading it, apparently it says she reads and know what she's talking about. I don't read and know. Hold on, what does it say? Um. She well, has yes. done. She has done and is doing the reading. We may not agree, but we got to be gentle with each other. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's what everybody. And people, I'm like, wow, an people with, tripping over him people saying. People having an issue with him. Why does she got to be gentle? Why do black men feel like they? I'm like, what? And as you go down Twitter, I was like, and, bro, there's some people that didn't even even listen. I know some people personally that didn't even listen to the song. They just saw the lyrics and said, oh, that's all I needed to see. J. Cole's canceled. J. Cole's canceled. Oh, man, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> bro, come on, y'all. Come on, my beautiful black queens. So and it's, it's a super pro-black women that's, like, on that. Oh, man. Like, I, I get it, man. But I, 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 I just, uh, I don't get it why is everything is a challenge in the sense of we don't want our black women to be great. Well, I, at least I do. I can't speak for everybody else. How do you feel, China? What do you feel like? I personally used to the song, and I think it's dope. Um, as a black woman, I definitely... I gotta put it. I don't like when females sit here and do all, well, why this and why that? Because I'm the main person that, um, that say that no matter what you're saying, whoever you are, tone is everything. You can say... <laughs> Whatever you need to say, and if you say it in an aggressive ass tone, I'm gonna get buck with you. But if you say it in the nicest way that you can, then everything will be like smooth sailing. 
So mm-hmm. I don't see nothing personally wrong with the song, to be honest. I don't see why J. Cole needs to be canceled. Um, <laughs> me neither, man. I, to to be honest, like I say, it's a dope hit to me. But you do have them females who is not... Um, what am I looking for? Y'all know me. I have, you know, I don't. Don't care. be scared. Just, I mean, I'm, I'm telling both scared. of y'all. I thought we was potting. I didn't know we was gonna be out here. You know, scared. To talk, but you know, <laughs> uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ignorant. No, I got you. Um, I like. That, I think some of them just like to hear themselves talk. That too. Um, <laughs> what else? I don't want to say not woman enough, not grown up, but not woman enough, not grown up yet. So you have to realize, like, if you grown and you have a grown mindset, that shouldn't be, y'all should not worry about anything that J. Cole has to say in his lyrics about what a woman has to say. Um, if you actually sit down and listen to the lyrics and understand what he's talking about, it's, there's nothing to cancel him over. But, hey. She's a successful, look, this is one of the uh, tweets that I wanted to, um, let me see. Point out. Where did it go? It's a situation. It's a situation of a black man threatened by a black woman. He is feeling jealous that he can't be on her level. So he is telling her to sit down and shutting her down. This is no way to uplift each other. J. Cole needs to go through, go work through some gender things. Toxic masculinity. That toxic masculinity word. Ooh, it's a favorite. It's a favorite among some people. Half the men that call you queen are misogynistic to the core. Words are never a form of endearment. Actions are. That's. Say it again. Oh. Say it again for my people in the back. Half the, men, <laughs> half the men that you call queen are misogynistic. Wait, half the men you. Half the men that you call queen. What? They're basically saying if you're a guy. If you're a man, if you call your girl queen, you low-key misogynistic to the core. You just can't help it. That's basically what it is. This is a okay, let me, let me let me do something. Let me do something real quick. Yeah, keep bro. that yeah. keep that together. Yeah, bro. It's it's oh my god, bro. I just want us to come <clears throat> together, dog. Let me just read something real quick. I just want us to so, come together. <laughs> misogynistic means you're strongly prejudiced against women. Yeah. Deeply ingrained misogynistic attitudes. Yes. So if yep. I call, well, I'm not just not on flat surface that I'm calling my my lady a queen that I'm yeah. that's meaning I'm misogynistic, but that's just saying half these niggas out here saying queen, queen, queen. But they're misogynistic to the court. Cause it sounds cool, because it's a trend. <clears throat> well, I mean uh, Um Let's see, we can get real. Well, we can. We can get real, bro. So we can get real. I don't give a damn. Misogyny man. manifests in numerous ways, including social exclusion, sex discrimination, hostility, patriarchy, male privilege, male privilege, uh, belittling of women, uh, disenfranchisement of women, um, sexual object- objectification. Bro, I'm about to. I'm about to start unfollowing people, man. So this individual. Did you hear what I just said? What'd you say? Wow. I, I hear some <laughs> big words there. I'm I'm sitting here pulling the U of H out of my cap. These words are pretty thick. Um it was just saying like male privilege, belittling women, seeing them mm-hmm. as sexual objects and stuff like that. Um uh okay, this let's go somewhere. All right, you guys let's please together. go somewhere. The first the first one, like the whole sexual objects like i don't think women realize like how we used to do things as kids like the whole oh i bet you won't go touch her butt for a dollar da, 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 da. like we didn't really realize that as being rape culture i think mm-hmm. i think what we miss and a lot of women that are on this men are toxic with the toxic masculinity a lot of women for real don't realize that um intention is a is a big cause on a lot of this like mm-hmm. what, what is your intention because you know like first of all a lot of us doing stuff when we was in middle school because i've seen women talk about oh 
rape culture has been around for a long time. We just didn't realize it. And it's like, well, we probably didn't because my intentions wasn't really to rape you. I was just yeah. like, the kid. I was being childish. You know what I'm saying? But if we want to, we can address that situation now to move forward and change the next generation. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Why do we always point our finger at a certain group for doing something that they may not have had the intention of doing wrongfully instead of just looking at it as learn from this, let's move forward teaching the next generation. Okay. Now I can tell my son, Hey man, it's, it probably ain't cool to do that. I did that when I was young, but that women feel some type of way about such and such and such and such. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's how we can change things instead of like trying to, Oh, that that's rape culture. And it's like, we're arguing about something that happened when I was, you know, 12. And it's like, well, now I'm, I'm a grown man. Now I have a different mindset. Let's mm-hmm. figure out how we can shape the next generation. Because the biggest thing yeah. is always the kids, the next generation. Yeah. So instead of us putting our time into how to move forward with the future, mm-hmm. we fight each other about the past. God damn it, if I don't get a book deal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can get that book deal, bro. You may oh. have took that from somebody, bro. You may have plagiarized that. I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's all you. I did. I did have like Google up at the same time, but yeah. I wasn't looking at it though. I was looking. I was. I was in my bag. But now, nah, um, because toxic masculinity is a word and it's a phrase, we're gonna have to have like a bunch of people. We're gonna have to have a bunch of y'all on here. Like, just, yeah, we're gonna have I, I really want to hear from women that be on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's like I just I want to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, just where do you think these guys get these traits from? What do, why do you think all men are just so toxic and we're just so, we just we're have the, this privilege. We're the scum of the earth, man. <laughs> we're scum. We're filthy animals. <laughs> you're filthy animal? That's, Not that's for exactly, real, bro. That's, that's exactly what we are, bro. We, we just, we don't care about the woman's plight or Let's get even deeper. The black woman's probably, we don't give a fuck. It's all about shaking that ass and making that cash, my nigga. That's it. It's all we give a fuck about. By their logic, of course. Now you, now you potting. Now you potting. <laughs> you feel me? By their logic, of course. And, and, and once again, I, like I said earlier, I want to get out of that generalization. So not every woman activist, you know, pro-black woman is on that. There are some that come with legitimate discussions that need to be had and there's nothing wrong with that i'm all for that that is where i stand i just want us to get past that putting everybody into the box because how many times and I, i'm sure you've heard this china i'm pretty sure you probably even said this it's okay it happens how many times you've heard or said niggas ain't shit oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's like it's yeah, like, it's like a, every everybody didn't say that. Yeah, niggas ain't shit. You know, and it's funny as a meme, but then it, it becomes so normalized to the point where it's a situation where motherfuckers believe that shit to their core, that niggas truly ain't shit. Right. You know and, it, and it sucks. It's like it's a double-edged sword. Where it's like, if I really ain't shit, then what's the point of me trying to be better? Exactly. What's the fucking point? If I really ain't shit, society already says I ain't Thanks. shit. If I can, my, these, it's women, like worse. these women that have my same skin color that go through some of the stuff I go through, they say I ain't shit. Now, granted, there are some motherfuckers that ain't shit. They be on some bullshit. That, that's, that's, that's facts. It's hey, fact. but you know what? Not to cut you off, what we don't do and what I used to fail to do a lot, this is what I've been working on. I've been working on me. So before mm-hmm. I say anything about somebody else, I think about me like mm-hmm. we we it, it's somebody always got all the answers i yep. just like people that got all the answers for everything yeah. because it's like you, you ain't don't, got all the answers you don't, you don't, that's <laughs> why you ain't got the answers sway don't have all the answers because you, you 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 really don't like like for somebody that person we all have that person in our life that got all the answers for every goddamn thing they know everything every reason why and it's just like once i start kind of like I kind of become like my mom used to always tell me, be slow to speak and quick to hear. So I, mm-hmm. I really, really transition in life and I really be peeping way more now. And I'll, I'll just, cause some people act and do things how they do it because of how they were raised, like their background. Somebody really may believe how they doing this shit is what it's supposed to be. Like I seen a um, clip of Blueface on um, <laughs> Instagram and he was with his son. He was like, Hey man, 
oh, look at that fine ass girl over there. She got a fat ass, huh? And his son like, who? And he was like, her, she got a fat ass, huh? He was like, yeah. Oh, no, he says she got a flat ass, I think. And so, um, but I'm like, you see that? Now you talking to a maybe three, four year old. He had mm-hmm. nothing. He wasn't nothing but about four years old. So now you you see why of like that being ingrained in him at four, and then your dad, who is always supposed to be like just the pioneer of your life, who you look at outside of God, mm-hmm. he's like that number one. So it's like you you getting that game from him. So when you grow up and you go to school, you like, hey, ma, shit, look, I see you. I see you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and now you become this thing because, oh, you just this. And it's like, well, sometimes people actually don't have a together background like you. And I don't give people excuses with bad backgrounds, excuses forever, because eventually you learn the stove is hot and you don't keep touching the stove. You know what I'm saying? Just because nobody told you when it turned flaming red that it's, that it's hot. That don't mean you're going to keep touching it, right? So, um, but at the same time, you didn't have the same guidance that somebody else did. But people that do have guidance in certain situations, they they tend to shun on and judge people for not having it. And that makes people who didn't have the proper upbringing or the learnings rebel. And then it just be like, fuck it. And then it's just, it just creates this diversity of personalities and, and feelings. Like, because you got some dudes that want to, like, uh, work things out with women and realize like you know nah we we won't we won't we won't, we won't think of y'all like this we all are queens and such and then you got niggas that's tired of hearing niggas ain't shit and it's fuck it I'm just not gonna be shit because this ain't shit niggas still getting ass from all these other women like all right. the women that still <laughs> it's just as many women as super pro black and calling men toxic you have that many women as throwing ass for bubble gum so it's like. <laughs> I'm saying, like, it's hard to change a nigga mind if you still getting it from a black female, but you don't have to work as hard from her. So you just gonna say, ah, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just gonna shut her up because you're still getting attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. niggas were still going to R. Kelly con- concert for how many years? R. Kelly been peeing on people. <laughs> it's like, he was still popular, though. That's the thing people don't understand. Niggas know how to block people out. If you just ain't in a view, all the people that's calling him, oh, you're a rapist, you're this, you're that. R. Kelly, all right. At a concert, women, I seen the clip when they was like, piss on me. I'm like, that's it. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you, you can't argue with a motherfucker. Just, just quit arguing. Fuck it. If you believe something, let's just move forward with the change. Because arguing about this shit, men are so toxic. They got privilege. They this and this and that. It ain't doing shit for us, it's especially not, if we just button heads about it. So we all just need to love each other at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Let's spread that peace. Drink water and love each other. It sounds nice in theory, but you know, how that go, bro? Okay. I just have to put my two cents. China, what you feel? You need, you need to put a two cents because me and Rosen kind of went in for a little bit. <laughs> I was just right. listening. <laughs> Are we on the right track? Yeah, you guys actually are on the right track. Um, we not know, you know. <laughs> type of One, not everybody, and I hate it. Not everybody has that mentality, of course. Not everybody has that mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, even going back to what you said uh, with, with uh, what's his name, Blueface, was saying about yeah. his son. Being a preschool teacher, for one, you shouldn't be even talking to your son about asses at that age. You have up to, like, your child is five years old to mold your child of how your child is going to be mm-hmm. basically for the rest of his life, his or her life. So um, by you instilling that into a person already at a young age, it's like you're not – you. for one, I feel like he's going to grow up being in that category of niggas ain't shit. Of mm-hmm. course, uh, I don't like when females be quick to say that all niggas ain't shit. No, just the nigga you dealt with was shit. That doesn't mean that every nigga ain't shit. <laughs> I can't stand that. Um, Cause that's not that's not true. <laughs> Women but, abuse that line, but right, I hate right. Right. <laughs> they definitely abuse that line. That's all the niggas at the Red Rooster where you be going to every weekend. Uh-huh. Right, Carol's. <laughs> Not Carol. <laughs> facts. Super facts. 
But nah, you guys, I mean, you guys are on the right track. If y'all wasn't, I would have interrupted y'all and said, put my little two cents in, but no. She was like, ah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, time out. Nah, but nah, y'all, y'all on the right track. Like, everything oh, yeah. that you need for sure. I had to let Rose be. This is what happens. This is what happens when we're grown and we're woke. Thanks. And you have that grown mind mentality, not that childish shit. No nah, facts, cause you 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 think about the more important things, man. Like at the end of the day, I don't really be stressing over half the shit that be going on. Like you know, mm-hmm. only thing that I'm focusing on is creating a future for my children where they don't gotta be scared because the police is pulling them over. Um, right. <clears throat> one day they, my son is gonna leave the house. Like all right, that I'll be back. That's 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 the future. You know what I'm saying? God says the same. That's something that I'm gonna have to hear one day. So I don't want to have to fear. Like, damn, where you going, man? We, what time you gonna be there? Because even if you know all that information, something still could happen. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's bigger things for us to really be kind of mold together. And um, I just really feel like people underestimate love. Like, oh man, people just say the word because it's like good morning. Right, Those motherfuckers don't care if you have don't a good morning. It's like, good morning, and keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I love you. Like that, that shit really is. And it's like, do you actually love that person? Facts, because it's real. Like, I feel like just trying to like um, meeting people nowadays isn't the same like it used to be. Oh, yeah. I feel bad for the singles, man. (laughs) Ooh-wee. I can't tell you how many times. Okay, so, for example, for me, because I'm single, a guy who sit here and say they want to take me out, I'm curious of what they're going to say. So I say, okay, well, you know, what is your idea of a first date? Now, I'm a pretty easy person to please, like, you know, Typically, I would say somewhere fun, like paintballing or David Busters, because I need to see if you're a fun person. Right. But Take if you sit here and tell me, oh, yeah, we're just going to chill at the house and smoke. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that by myself at my own damn house. That is not a first date. Talk your that talk, is man. unacceptable. Take me to a restaurant. and I'm not even... I'm not even saying it has to be because I'm not oh, like queen. a queen. Oh, you gotta spend Talk all this money queen. type of person. You know, we can go mm-hmm. to Chile, but if we had a great fucking time, that's oh, pause, all that pause, pause. Didn't they just have something going around to them? Uh, would you accept your man for a first date if he took you to Chili's? Ain't and nothing wrong like, with Chili's. I like it. Like, uh, uh-uh, you better not. If he take me to Chili's, it's uh, uh-uh. uh. That's that yeah. ignorant mindset. And that's why them females ain't gonna never find nobody, and they gonna keep Fridays. having those ain't shit niggas. Yeah, it was TGI. No, it was. You know why I know it was TGI Fridays? Because TGI Fridays is where I went on my first date. Oh, it was TGI Fridays. Yeah, like it, they was like, would you be okay with a man taking you out on the first date to TGI? Now I was like, ain't nothing wrong with that. I was like, what, eighteen, nineteen? I wasn't balling. Like shit, you lucky we ain't go to McDonald's and to the place. <laughs> that, that was on the list. I ain't out here with no money like that. You know now I'll be mad at that. Don't let that be the first date. That could be the like second, third date. So you ain't hear me we say got Chuck to e. know Cheese. each other. Chuck E. Cheese. You said Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck, bro. That shit was five to you. Nah, you go over there and take over on the basketball goals and just see what oh. you about. Bro, you might as well just take it to Dave and Buster's. Let's play for a right, second. Day. Right, right. <laughs> nah, it ain't about that. Yeah. Take it to Dave and Buster's, man. Get but you can, you can like overpower the kids in there because the David Buster's oh, other girl. All right, so. y'all ain't trying to pie. We we we'll bring it up. No, okay. we're not David, trying to. David yeah, Buster's. All right. Yes, David Buster's, bro. Let's all go right. David and Buster's. Let's bowl upstairs, man. Let's go bowling. Move, little tray, nigga. Get the fuck out. <laughs> You just trying to be competitive. Daddy. <laughs> Damn, Damn, people won't get off the machine. <laughs> Kids talk the most shit, though. That's, that'll be another funny thing. <laughs> Kids talk the most shit. Like, when I listen to my kids talk, they will talk about people. And it's just like, I'm like, where the hell do they get this shit from? They don't learn nothing you say. They learn from what you do. Oh, because, mm-hmm. boy, I'll be listening. <laughs> They the realest people on earth. I swear to God. <laughs> they they too real. But but now nah, um I don't I don't feel like there's nothing wrong 
with Chili's. And um, but you do you do have those dudes that's like, yeah, now nah, we can just chill at the crib. But you know, their intentions really ain't on no right long last. It ain't yeah. chilling. <laughs> it's chilling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't chilling, nigga. <laughs> nah. Yeah, like this is weird for the single people nowadays. Like, I'm so sorry for you guys. Like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know what to do anymore. Like, it's it's pretty crazy. I don't lie to you. Because, like, I don't know. Ross, well, Ross, what, what's what, you on that tip now? Like, will you just hit somebody up? Like, hey, what you doing this Saturday? Um, let's go to such and such. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, those, it's those, just, look at him. Look, he rolled his eyes. It's one of those things, bro. The nigga rolled his I mean, eyes and smack his fist. You know what I'm saying? It's just one yeah, of those things, man. So but you nah, in that I, you in that bag now though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 one of those we keep the communication going, you know, keep the engagement going or whatnot. Yeah, those conversations, those late night combos, those are crucial. Those are very, very crucial. No for real. If you can have a late night combo, we're not talking about late night you lit, you high or drunk. We're talking nah, about late so- night sober conversation with someone and you look at your phone and it's two hours later, they let you know something. That's, that's, that's something good. You continue those conversations. You build that, that relationship with the know someone. And then that's when you hit them with the, hey, you know what you're doing this weekend? Well, if you're not, if you're free, yeah. you should go here. Boom, 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 boom. Set it up and have a good time. And, you know, it, it just gives you that, that option of being able to get to know that person and figure out that person's interest. Then she she on the phone. Then she she got a call right now. Yeah, what's good? What you doing right now? <laughs> oh, you pardon? Oh yeah, that's that's crazy, man. My oh, boy I got the power. Hey, you pardon right now? Oh, all right, cool. Well, what you well, doing? How you gonna be done? Got a oh, you gonna be done in a few minutes? All right, all right, that's a bit. All right, cool. Wow. What you doing this weekend? Yeah, 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 yeah. We should go out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 got it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, we should we should definitely go out. All right. You wanna go to TGIF? Uh, yeah, we was just talking. I don't think we've ever had anybody get on the phone bet, while we yeah. were on the podcast. <clears throat> that was some real nigga shit there. Nah, that was some nigga shit. That was some super nigga shit. <laughs> Super califragilist to SBL nigga. That was some nigga shit for real. Little that was some cow. super nigga shit. <laughs> you got a date lined up? Who? You? <laughs> no, that was Ari ass. Oh, okay. Okay. Come on, I got a date lined up. You got a date lined up? She would have been doing weird <laughs> shit in the background. She would have been like, so what you? Yeah. <laughs> you know the conversation good when you start fiddling them stuff like damn. Nah. Man. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember I remember them uh them Uvu conversations back in the day, bro. I used to fall asleep on Uvu. Oh yeah, yeah. That's when you knew it was about to be something something real. Oh, yeah. You fell asleep on the phone or fell asleep right. on the Uvu or the Skype, that's when you knew. Well, I was the type to be like, all right, I'm gonna hit you back. <laughs> no and nah, and then when they hit you with the no, don't go to sleep. That's when you knew. I'm like, oh. nah, at, you know, at first it's like, all right, but after a while, you're like, man, nigga trying to get real with his sleep. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I sound like sleep. <laughs> I know I sound like sleep, man. Was, I, I sound like, I like Blondie. Angel. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Nobody heard that, though. We just going to move past that. No, you're moves. definitely an mm-hmm. asshole, bro. Nobody heard it, Ross. We just going to move past it. Any friends, ladies and gentlemen. Just kidding. Wait, so, what happened? I'm coming <laughs> I it's, told him, he said, you sound like an angel, right? Yeah, I sound like an angel. No, what did you say, Ross? You said you sound I like said, I sleep. sound like I'm just asleep. Now. I said he sound like Blondie, his dog, because his dog has, like, this condition where wow. she, like, coughs or something like that. Wow. Like, nobody heard that. I was trying to just roll <laughs> past it. No, friends. We don't We don't have to stay on that. We don't. We don't. Yeah, we, don't. We, can, we can capture the dating game in another podcast. I think that'll be yeah. interesting. We need to hear from you single Pringles and see how y'all feel about Single it. Pringles, nigga? What the <laughs> fuck is this? What the fuck you think this is? The Disney Network, my nigga? Oh. Single Pringles. Okay. All single Pringles out there. Hope you're having the same time. <laughs> All you single Pringle ladies looking for a dingle. <laughs> what? 
Or a little tingle. <laughs> I was looking for a little tingle. Come on, in the clutch mingle. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a little tingle, bro. A tingle, yeah. man. That's that's what boys looking for. But nah, this is a fun podcast, man. This is a fun episode. Right. We got to do this again. Yes, we right. do. We do. Yes, we do. Uh, China had a phone call. She got to go. So um, yeah, she got to go. She got, that, <laughs> she got that phone call. Mm-hmm, so that. uh you said you want uh <laughs> you said you wanted some uh Timmy Chan or Chim- is Chimmy is Chimmy Chan. Y'all know my fat ass. Chimmy Chan. Are we supposed to be eating fried? You was talking about eating somewhere Friday or yeah. some fried chicken. We were supposed to be eating uh, the French fry. What's the name of it? Uh, I got to check it. It's a black owned business. Oh, that's another thing. Have y'all saw the restaurants and uh, different places not to shop at that support? So I've been, it's been so hard. It's been so hard. But so far, I've been not shopping or eating at any place that is not supporting. Trump. It's so hard because I love Starbucks, and I passed up like twenty five Starbucks since then. I've been crazy drinks since then, but I've been keeping to it. Not what you get from there? Huh? What do you get from there? Like you have like a go to? Okay, so if I okay. just want something to drink, I get a passion tea lemonade or a dragon fruit lemonade. That's easy if to I get from somewhere. Coffee, during okay. the summertime, I get a caramel macchiato. Okay. Or no, well, during the winter time, I get a pumpkin spicy latte. Mm. <laughs> during the winter, okay. oh, he's, that. <laughs> he's one yes. of those Starbucks heads. Nah, I don't, I don't even drink coffee. Cause. I need two sugars, one cream, <laughs> a, a half an ice cube. Do not put more than half an ice cube in my. <laughs> I'm getting it. Straight. I couldn't work it. <laughs> I think working at Starbucks is harder than being a doctor. Like, you got to know. It is. You know how many drink combinations you got to make? I'm straight. I don't know. I never worked for Starbucks, but it looks hard. Um, mm-hmm. McDonald's caramel frap is fire. I don't know if y'all have had it before. You know, nah, I'm not really it. a coffee drinker. You can't. I don't think. I think McDonald's is on the list. You well, can't eat that. Uh, you, you lying. You just, you just I did swear, that. I swear. <laughs> McDonald's. Well, I, I ain't had one. <laughs> the, lie, hey, the lies you tell. I hadn't had one yet. I, I was about to get one of them. Starbucks. Damn. What's another one? They ain't on the list, list. They on the they they on the A list or the B list? They on the A list. Like they the main ones. Damn. I don't fucking know shit. All I know is they on the list. <laughs> That's good enough. Damn. I wanted to hit one of them up this weekend. Probably. <laughs> A caramel frap. I ain't had one in a minute. I don't know McDonald's on the list. I was just fucking with you on that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're not. See what black people Chick-fil-A. be doing? Chick-fil-A is on that list. Not I Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A. Eat more chicken. <laughs> really? Not them. I love Chick-fil-A. Not them. Or is it eat more beef? It's eat more chicken. Is it? It's Chick-fil-A. This nigga said eat nah. more Nah, it's time for the it's time for the podcast and ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, it's it's dope. No, nah, because they got the cow, the beef the, cow. The cow. Okay. The yeah, cow. yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I got, I got a new one. I had a moment. I had a moment. I got you. Wow. I had a moment. Yeah, that was a moment. That I had was a moment. moment to remember. Oh, yeah, it does. So. It's good. <laughs> That's all right. Look, I own up to my moments, though. You feel me? We can't be smart all the time. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. Not, not everybody graduating in the top ten in their class all the time. But um, <clears throat> we ain't gonna talk about all that. But um, we appreciate uh, China Maria mm-hmm. for being on the podcast. Uh, episode twenty five, I think. You don't know what episode? Twenty five. It gotta right. be twenty five because twenty three <laughs> was the Jordan one, and then twenty four was the one with the police officers. Twenty five is because. Yo, limit for dating a female is 25. So, yeah, we 25. So, see what you did there. You see, see what you did there. I had to recover. From the <laughs> yeah, chicken, had to bounce back. Eat more chicken situation. But now, nah, uh, we appreciate y'all for joining. Make sure y'all follow China. She's looked, did we bore you? You kind of tired. <laughs> That was a huge <laughs> ass yarn. And you tried to clap in front of the yarn like we weren't going to see it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did. Mm. <laughs> 
I did. No one told you to catch that. Oh, God, right. Y'all put me on blast. I got to get y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I already got Ross with the blondie situation. So, but now, um, make sure y'all follow her on her social media. Um, mm-hmm. Dope model. Be doing her thing out here in these streets. And she's for what she say. You feel me? So, make sure y'all go support. And uh, we'll catch y'all boys in the next podcast, man. Much love. Peace. And soul for you single Pringles that want to mingle. Oh my god, uh, <laughs> what the fuck?